This video is powered by private internet access. With apps for Windows, Mac, Linux, and even Google Chrome, they've got your VPN needs covered. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CB Modder here, back with another video and we've been checking out a number of really cheap SSDs and budget SSDs lately and I do get questions quite often about them as to how they're actually going as we started this series a little while ago and they've been running for a little while and people just want to know how are they going so I thought let's take a quick little minute to go ahead and take a look and a bit of a recap to see what drives were checked out and how they're actually going here today. Now at the time of recording we're getting towards the end of December 2018. 18, and we've had uh, the oldest drive for about four or so months at this point. So they haven't been running extremely a long time, but they've definitely been long enough that people kind of want to know, are they even still working? And some of them are under $20 and well, $20 running 24 hours, seven days a week, kind of get the idea that they might be a little bit skeptical of them. Are they dead? Are they working? Let's go ahead and find out. So again, as of the time of recording, we are looking at around five to seven drives. There's a couple on my shelf. There's some still in the server and stuff like that, but uh, mostly all of them are still working and I've actually been shocked uh, as to how many are still actually working and how long they've actually last. Now in their respective videos I said that I'd go ahead and put them in my server and run them 24 hours 7 days a week and that's exactly correct. I have a set of them over in my server that just runs constant writes and then once it fills up I think the software empties it. I don't exactly know how the software works but I get a little total saying how many terabytes written uh, which allows me to go ahead and keep tabs on what each drive is actually doing so when they fail I can say oh it wrote X amount of uh, terabytes and then obviously let you guys know so uh, that's one set of them and I've also too picked up a couple others for use around the studio because of this newfound I guess short-term reliability in these particular drives so whether it be uh, wear level and that kind of stuff it's kind of interesting to see what they're all actually doing and taking a look at them yeah they're actually all still working whether it's a $20 drive or a bit more expensive $30 drive uh, all of them but one is still actually working and uh, our oldest one was purchased back in August of 2018 at the start of August 2018 and it's still holding up fine today and if anything major happens between sitting down recording and then obviously releasing I'll update in that description box but all in all so far has been absolutely perfect. Now that said the death that has actually uh, happened was sort of unsurprisingly. So recently we checked out this guy here, the Light On SSD, which unfortunately when I was doing the benchmarking died. I actually managed to go ahead and get a replacement unit thanks to my Amazon Prime subscription that I was still on a trial, but they still set it up as a full refund. I don't exactly know how it all worked, but hey, Basically, I sent off the old one with a shipping label, I think the uh, seller sent me, and then I just got a new one, which was pretty cool to see. Uh, so I did get a replacement one, which lasts me about two weeks of 24-7 use because I didn't need to hit it with Crystal Disk Market first, and then it died. So the Light On SSD is the only one that has died on me so far, and I'm really not that surprised. I mean, back in the original video that we went ahead and did, um, I did about six or seven, or maybe it was five. E either way, I did a number of Crystal Disk Mark runs as I was getting kind of inconsistent results. Uh, so I wanted to have a number of them so I could say, okay, this seems to be an average kind of result, and then I can present it to you. Because there's no point in me doing a um, SSD review and get one set of really awesome numbers and then the rest of the numbers are kind of trash. Or on the flip side, there's no point in me doing a review and then finding these terrible numbers when in reality is just a bad crystal disk mark run. So uh, normally I do run a few which killed the first one and then the second one that I got in I didn't really need to do crystal disk mark. Uh, I ran it once just to make sure that my numbers were still the same and it was still working all that kind of stuff. Threw it straight in the server. Uh, less than one terabyte uh, of uh, writes later it was completely dead. For some reason massive workloads just kill that poor little SSD. Again under a thousand gigabytes of writes and it was completely dead. In fact I think it was to the tune of about 700 terabytes though don't quote me on that one because uh, when the drive died it didn't actually fully like um, update the, the uh, writing software it kind of crashed the entire computer so not only did I have uh, no data it was also to a dead drive so it's a little bit hard to figure out but from my workings out on how much it could write and then how much it could read and that kind of stuff it seems to be uh, under that one terabyte marker which was 
kind of disappointing because the um, controller itself was made by a decent enough manufacturer, the flash was made by uh, Toshiba which is a decent manufacturer so it seems to be something in that drive has failed but hey that is completely dead but for the rest of them I'm actually really surprised and I have to say uh, performance wise they're all pretty much where I left them off in the reviews because it's only been about three months we're not experiencing massive performance drops as of yet so uh, in terms of sequential numbers in terms of Atto, HD tune all that kind of stuff uh, just refer back to those videos for the types of speeds because uh, from what I've done so far it is seeming to be about the same. Uh, I didn't do full benchmarking on them because I would want to keep my reads and writes going without having to like write down numbers and that kind of stuff so uh, those tests are still coming so do spec uh, a sort of a year kind of check in once we do get those drives up to a year but uh, definitely stay tuned for that is kind of an interesting thing to see uh, but what was more interesting was because of this sort of relatively short term reliability I actually picked up a number of these cheap drives to put in my own system not necessarily for main storage but for sort of caching things. So I picked up a couple Dogfish drives, Drevo drives, and uh, also two Crucial MX, uh, or rather BX500 that we checked out, that video right there, and um, I put them in a RAID 0 array. I got four of them for less than $150 during uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday kind of sales, and I put them all in RAID 0 and is able to get over 1.5 gigabytes per second reads in real world numbers. In terms of sequential and theoretics, uh, it's more like to the tune of 2 gigabytes, but in terms of actual read write real world numbers, I'm getting well in excess of 1.5 gigabytes reads and around that same number on the right side. It's kind of crazy, and what I actually use it for is uh, Premiere Pro ca uh, caching and also to other pro application ca caching. Can't even say that word right. But basically, when I record a video, like this, the uh, actual footage that comes straight out of the camera, even a 6950X 10 core monster with a 1080 Ti still can't handle that kind of video output. So uh, I go ahead and create proxy files, and in doing so, those proxy files need to go somewhere that is relatively fast. So I go ahead and put it on those uh, SSD RAID array, and man, that is absolutely awesome. I can scrub through timelines with epic speeds, and it is actually not that bad. And also, too, uh, being a cache drive, all my cached files are also too much easily accessible and much faster. Now, yes, uh, if that array was to die, yeah, I do lose that data on it, but it's only caching files and only proxy files where the original main files are all still backed up onto hard drives and that kind of stuff, and honestly, it's not the world's biggest deal. So, I really like the idea of taking these cheap drives, building some insane array for such a low price point, and then just getting some really epic performance. In fact, uh, during most likely the Christmas sales, I pick up another four. So I have eight in total for around that $300 price point for about 960 gigabytes of RAID 0 storage with a theoretical, I think it's something ridiculous, like four gigabytes per second read and writes in theory. Obviously, reality is more like probably three and a half or so gigabytes per second, but that is speeds that are rivaling NVMe SSDs and about a 900 or about a terabyte NVMe SSD is really, really expensive, whereas I'll be spending about three or so hundred dollars on cheap SSDs that perform about the same. Now, yes, if I bought a single NVMe SSD, I could actually store important stuff on it and not worry about dying and that kind of stuff, but all in all, the performance you get for the price that you pay can really be awesome for those types of applications, and I cannot wait to be storing these videos on, like, four gigabyte per second writes because that would basically mean I don't need to worry about having proxies anymore because the drives are just fast enough to read and write from. So uh, definitely an interesting project there. Do stay tuned for that. I have um, a plan for obviously eight, to, uh, eight drives as I did mention. I also do want to do 10 and 20, although those two videos will need to take a little bit more time to accumulate some of those actual drives. So uh, in terms of actual though, getting back to the reliability of them, they've actually not been that bad at all. And I've also too picked up a couple to hold around the studio to use as a uh, quick little install drive. So for example, when you see uh, benchmarks, for instance, if I do a quick temperature test and I don't want to like wipe another drive and just quickly get onto Windows install, I just go ahead and grab one of these cheap drives, boom, they're easy to done or easier, easier to do. So uh, all in all, it's actually been not too bad, but it's interesting to see that some of the cheapest drives on the market have survived so far and sure, it's only been a short amount of time and most likely they'll start dying in six to 12 months time, uh, but just for the short term at least, it's been really, 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 really positive rather. So that said, 
I'm probably going to be back in six months time saying, yeah, scrap everything I said because they're all dead. But all in all, if you're just looking for something short term that's actually decent, they're not too bad. But do let me know down in that comment sections, uh, how much longer do you think they'll last? Honestly, I'm thinking around that six month marker and then we'll start to see a lot more die off. Um, but so far in that two to three months mark, it's not been too bad. So do let me know down below. If you want to check out or grab one of these drives, I've left them linked down in that description box. Thanks guys for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.